Whoa, it's Woolsey. Welcome to Creation Rotation. Today I'm joined by three other talented creators. We got Dominus. Hey. We got Jazer. Yo. And we got Rustier. What's up? I'm on my alt account because we're about to create four new levels, but every 20 minutes we have to rotate them between us until everyone's had one turn on each level, plus one turn on their original level at the end, which is a new rule that I've just added thanks to Dominus. He's kind of a genius. Thank you. This has been a long time coming. I'm gonna start the timer in three, two, one. Let's go. For this creation rotation, I'm using the song Sayonara by Zorbarax on a 16 second start off set. Very vibey song. Some of you might know this artist as Zulu75 in the past. The first creation rotation with Alkali, Jonathan, and Hayavo was recorded about three or four months ago. I'm kind of throwing Rustier into the deep end into the recording world of mine. The other two creators have done a level swap at least, but Rustier is not au fait with how I do things, so this is going to be very interesting. It should be alright because he's shown me that he is a versatile creator, so my expectations aren't super high, but I trust him, you know? Trust here. Ooh, I like that gap out of there. That's cool. I like the floaty feel in the beginning. This is cool. Using mini and then hopefully a jumping ship transition like that. But I'm not sure how I'm going to indicate this because, as I've explained before, I think it was just in my hitbox video. You see, if I rotate this portal, it stays at a vertical hitbox until it goes exactly horizontal. However, in game, this is totally different because the hitboxes are treated differently in normal mode and in the editor. You see the difference right there? That's horizontal now, so it's really weird. This song is kind of weird to sync to, so I'm kind of struggling with it. It's definitely a cool song, I'm just not very sure about the direction I'm taking with this at all. Should be fine. I like the miscellaneous vibe of this. I feel like it's going to leave a lot of room for creativity from these three creators, who have a lot up their sleeve. All three of these creators are extremely talented and can work with a lot of different vibes, so hopefully this should be something interesting to fuel them with. I don't know. Oh, that is a difficulty spike. Hmm. I could definitely add some structures above and below these little box structures. One goes to zero and then two can go to half opacity and I can use that for the sub structures that aren't really going to take up much but they're there. I'll make color channel one copy the background with a bit less brightness. There we go. I enabled blending and it looks a lot better as a sub structure. Obviously it's probably not going to stay but for now the presentation is going to be immaculate. Just going to add some ground spikes here and there just to mix it up. Excited to see what Dominus does. I wonder, if you receive this first, would you go for designs or background first? It's such an interesting question. Something I've done by accident that I really like is having two types of spikes on the underlay blocks and then only the flat spikes on the front, as you can see. I guess to mix it up on the ground, I could- Oh god, what is this editor layering? Also, it is storming outside. I apologize if that's picking up on the mic at all. Gonna use that color channel again for some invisible objects that are just gonna sit in kind of random spots. Okay, we have five seconds left. Let's stare at the menu for a bit. How did that go for you guys? Horrible layout, but let's go. <laughs> I don't know. I think mine just could get epic right as it is right now. Mine looks way more difficult than it actually is. Oh. It looks like top one extreme demon, but it's... it's <laughs> no, my level is top one extreme demon. Yeah, I'm just going to remake your whole layout, Jazor. Sorry. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's definitely go for it. It's a bad layout anyway. Milk carton by Rustier. This is exactly what I expected from Rustier. Let's go. Oh, okay. I'm going to keep this black background. Makes it very easy for me to make neon decoration, which I'm going to do with these objects, I think. I think I'm going to use like a random color channel all the way at 99 so no one finds it on a light blue that I can just add corners to as well. Flip it around the other way and scale down just to put on the edge here. Oh Lord, time is going fast. I'm three minutes in at this point. Oh, there's not many structures here, dude. My whole idea was to create a really easy design to replicate and fill the level with, but there's not actually that many structures, so it's gonna look like I've done nothing. Starting at the first connection, I'm gonna start adding groups to these. So anything that actually links to the line is gonna receive a group here. Then it's gonna go on editor layer two, so I know that it's no longer a part that I need to consider for a group. Then we're gonna add group number, not one or two, because I like to have them on opacities, but we can start off on three with these. Then I've got to select anything that would touch these connections. Nice. Just do the same thing, but the next free group. Okay, now they're all done. So I can put them back on one. I'm going to put them on black blending. Color number 10, black blending, and we will start making pulse 
colors for these. But first, I want to have one color channel, which I'm going to set out as two, I think. No, two's black. Number three, then. That just cycles through all of the colors. So we'll make a one second fade time for three with default. And then we'll change the hue around the slider just by a consistent amount each time. Doesn't really matter if it shifts all the way through a green because the fade time is going to make sure that all the ranges of green are covered. So you don't have to worry about specific shades and stuff. Oh god, there's duration lines that need to be accounted for because there's a speed changer. I don't like creating when there's a speed changer in the middle of the part, especially being an effect creator. Because you have to compensate for all of that time warping around and stuff. Cool, anyway, let's start making pulses. I think the first group was number three. We can have a 0.2 fade in, 0.8 fade out, so it's one second. Copy and color channel number three, I guess with a bit more brightness or something, I don't know. Then we just copy paste, move it two blocks or so to the right and increase the group. And you'll see initially it's creating a little pattern where these connect up with each other. The way I thought of this was by listening to the song. It goes like da 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 And I like the way that it just kind of links up like that. I think it's cool. And we can repeat this, as you can see, maybe with a bit more delay between but it will just continuously link on like that and change color because of how I'm using the copy color feature. I'm probably gonna use that color channel number three with some invisible blocks. I can definitely just copy this around and scale it down. So we have cool little patterns inside the blocks right there. I like having invisible blocks because since they're not visible all the time, you can get away with just having really random arrangements that look cool. I'm even just gonna rotate these on their side. It doesn't really matter. There we go. I think that's neat. We could definitely have a design underneath that, but I'm not going to be the one to do that. I just want to create the vibes first. This whole round is all about the setup for someone else. Look, I'm getting away with such copy paste. It's amazing. I've also just set out my green gameplay lines so I can set out some structures that I want up here, maybe. Just miscellaneous floating ones. I'm going to copy the values of these objects. Kind of just put the spikes at a skew width angle. It doesn't really have to be perfect. Just paste the state onto it and then copy paste it a bunch. So these objects are going to go super bright because of how the inverse stacking effect works. You see right there? I think that's a cool structure to have if I have some black glow on top. If I just kind of shade the edges with some black objects like that. There we go. It feels a bit more secluded when I do that. Also going to make some ground spikes with these groups that I used on these objects. Just going to copy the values from random ones. I can change the hue a little bit as well just to mix it up. There we go. Just got to connect all the dots now. Just got to fill it in before the time runs out. Also just going to put a random pulsing object that's on white on top of these objects. On T3, I don't know if anyone needs to fix the layering i'm sorry but i think that's a cool place for a star and it kind of works because the outline is white hold on hold on got an idea if i make a new color channel right now please let me select the star i know there's a billion objects here but if i make a new color channel that copies the object color for that star then if anyone changes it then the star will change for them i'm so glad that i made these kind of clustered because when they scale up and down they get like shifted just because of the sheer amount of objects that are placed and how they're scaled it kind of bugs out and moves the spikes so definitely the right call to make them lopsided a bit because i can shamelessly copy paste now without it being inconsistent there's enough stuff to maybe spark some ideas of your own and add on to it you know <gasps> with the ground actually copies color three that is such a low chance of that happening rusty i just sonically knew that i was gonna be using that that's 20 minutes oh my lord that's so interesting actually wait jizor you gave me a level that was uploaded by dominus <laughs> what <laughs> Yeah, you gave me <laughs> Oh wait, oh I'm stupid. Wait, 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 that was the wrong idea. I just had an epic effect idea, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to pull it off. Oh, that's what I like to hear. I love this. Now, what stands out are the spikes. This is gonna be such an easy round for me. I just copy the values of whatever the regular blocks are on. I paste them onto the spikes on two. There we go. And I can rotate this around itself like this and make like a weird jagged shape. That looks kind of nice. If I scale it down and fix a couple things, yeah. And I guess this is my opportunity to bring in some blending objects. And I'm going to use the values of the glow. If it's bright enough, I don't even... Yeah, okay, that looks cool. I actually like the fact that the square in the middle has the diamond shape. Uh, it's fine. Copy values and we'll just put a pulsing triangle on top. It's going to work with the pulsing objects we have over here. How does this even work? What dictates whether the top of the block is glowed up? I don't even know, man. I'm just doing whatever the homies have been doing. 
moment. And apparently this glow piece is the wrong color. <laughs> that looks pretty cool, I think, if I just make it a little bit closer. But is that possible? That's such a huge problem. I need to make a new color that copies the color of the background. I don't know why it took me this long to register that the color was not working. There, that's more like a shadow. Duh. I think it's going to be really funny if I just leave all of this as a layout and see what happens to it. So I'm going to do exactly that. And I'm going to select these objects and essentially just copy paste them. Then I can copy the values of this spike and make some glow rotations for the background. Instead of being on group 10, which I made like 0.27 opacity, we can have the 0.54 group 9. Okay, so on group 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so I've got four pieces of glow in a slight circle pattern. I'm going to copy paste, 45 degree rotate. Make sure these are above the shadowy ones and have them on the blending. Then in the very middle, we need a center, group number 11, and then the circles can have 12. Easy peasy. Rotate 12 around 11, three seconds, ease in out, 180 degrees, and we need that before it ever even appears on the screen. Don't fade, don't enter, B4, and then we just link them together and start copy pasting and build helpering. Haven't even tested how the rotation looks, I'm just going for it. because. We're Whatever it is, it's going to be better than nothing because I have not made anything good in this level so far. <laughs> Please work. Okay. It looks kind of good, right? It's way more atmospheric than it was. I'm not sure how to feel about these spike things. I feel like the pulsing objects kind of ruin it. So I'm going to add more of them. How does this look on the bottom? Oh, you can barely see it, but that's actually kind of ideal. I just have this in a couple of places just to spice up the way the ground looks. Uh, I need to think of a design very quickly. We'll put this on T3. We'll give it group 10, which is low opacity. Group 9, which is the flashy thing. Uh, what if I go to a new editor layer and start giving it a bunch of different moving groups and have it blur a little bit? Three up, three to the right. Then when that finishes, it can move back. I'm rushing because I don't have time. I have like one minute to do this. Come on. Just put it in a bunch of different objects. I don't care. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I need to remember to copy paste with each layer as well before I get set with this. Okay, done, done, done. And then I get these triggers. I go and select filter. I get them all. Copy paste, two to the right, one group up. Come on. Bro, this was like my make or break. Either I ruined the level or I made it great. <laughs> Definitely not just fixing something. Wow, cheating. Yeah, I am cheating. Ooh. What? Yo, this is actually kind of sick already. Oh, there's so much left at the end. <laughs> I tried, Wolsey. I'm sorry. No. This is so sick. How do I finish this? <laughs> Okay, I have an idea, which is quite risky, but I'm going to go for it. So obviously this is all in a line. So if I get these squiggle objects, I can copy them all the way across. Then what color are these objects? They're on one. Okay. And then on the drums, I can pulse color channel one to copy color channel two with more brightness. Boom. Boom. So it kind of matches almost. Then in between, I can have a very short pulse for color number two, which copies one with no brightness change. So it starts off orange, it all goes to orange, then it fades to blue and then orange again. So it kind of it kind of keeps that orange alive that we had earlier. And I think these squiggles need to be lower opacity as well. We can have a bunch of these and have them wave around like I did in the last level. That's five groups. We'll go for 10. It will be kind of wave-like and underwatery if I move these three up and one to the right. One second ease and out. And then just a couple blocks before it ends, we need to move it back double. And then this is the mistake I made last time. I have to move the doubled movement back the other way. I've done this effect a million times and I kind of forgot about that. That's just the kind of pressure you get put in on this series. Okay, then every half block, there's going to be a new layer moving. We've started the movements way before they ever fade on, just so when they fade on, they're already in their bag. This could be horrible and I could be wasting a bunch of time, but my strat for if it's horrible is just going to be to cover it all in background covered glow, so it's just obscured. Oh, uh, it's okay. I should extend the movement time. What if I copied these and I flipped them upside down as like a little high detail mode? And as this goes on, they can increase in their opacity to a 0.8 max. I don't want it to go too high. Then I'm going to copy color background, go to T3, don't fade, don't enter. Just increase this out order a lot, give it a new group. And we're going to make a huge gradient that covers it. So we have this gradient right here. We're going to move it back with a move trigger all the way over here. 250 should do the trick. And then we can have a move trigger right here, I think. Whenever the level finishes, the last input is right there. Ease in out, it just moves back that distance. Minus 250. And this should just cover the whole level and make a nice clean ending. We might have to do more than one take though. Uh, no, because this other T3 stuff, we're going to have to fight for T3. Okay. 
Smooth. And then we toggle the whole level off while it's on the screen so you don't notice anything. So right there, we need to hide the player. Then we need to toggle everything. So let's get the whole level A group, number 16. Remove it from the toggle trigger and also put it in the toggle trigger. Oh, you can see the particles appear. That's lame. That's easily fixed. All we need is a background effect off trigger. I'm going to be really silly and add these alpha triggers, which turns the whole level to zero opacity. And I want to do that after every orange pulse. I don't know. Is that cool or not? Give me all of these objects real quick. I'm going to make some flickering effects. 17 goes to 0.33, then 0.66, then up to full, then to zero for a bit and have them turn back on slowly. I mean, the ending kind of sucks, but whatever. Nice. Top one extreme dune. Here it is. I haven't seen this in so long. What? What? No way. This is what happens when I don't get involved. Dude, that's so sick. Dude, it gives me like Saturn V vibes. Yo, the monsters got left in. Let's go. <laughs> They're still there. <laughs> Dude, that makes me so happy. Wow, is all I have to say. This is so sick. I love it. I love that they took my very first detail and used it for the block design. Very clever stuff, layering this black object on top of a light object to create that really cool grid pattern. Okay, so for the saw, I gotta have the color black just like most of the blocks, so it fits in that way already. Okay, so I have that color on the inside of the saw, and what I wanna do is block out the middle of it so there's no circle right there. Just gotta make sure that this saw and the saw behind it are on the same rotation otherwise they're gonna desync then I guess we can have another pulsing object on top with more black okay so we have a 70% opacity black here and then a full opacity black here and it all goes underneath this overlay so it all gets colorized which is neat wait these objects just go to zero opacity because it's copying the color of the background with blending but the background's too dark because it's been changed since I placed that so I'm going to copy this trigger. The screen above should make it colorful. It makes it a little bit messy in my opinion. So what I might do is change it so it's not too opaque. I like that because it's not always opaque. It's good. I'm thinking of just doing the flickering thing that I did in the other level by select filtering all of the squares that are inside these blocks and setting them to group 25. And we could also have some zero fade time changes to the outlines of the objects to black. And it's cool because I can now take these pulse triggers and then copy paste them, move them a bit to the left and change them in their channel. And I can make a bunch of stuff just go to black and that looks sick in my opinion. Oh man, pulses can honestly make or break a level. I don't know what it's done here. Are these good? I have no idea, but I kind of vibe with it, so... Okay, I need a portal design real quick. Shouldn't take too long if I just very quickly make this object, scale it up, and then just copy-paste it around. I'm gonna put it on color channel 5, but I'm gonna scale it down to 1.35, why not? on the next Z order up and make it black. Oh, that's actually so interesting because these objects aren't fully opaque, so it leaves like a gradient in the middle. That's cool. Someone made arrows in the ship and they never put it across the whole level, so I'm just gonna steal it and pretend I did that. Let's go! Let's go! Ooh, this background is good. Wow, Banana Rotator 4 had a glow up. And the end is still layout. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I keep it that way. <laughs> Yo, the banana, it seems a bit darker since last time. I do like those pixelated structures underneath. The question marks definitely make this nice, dude. Oh, the custom orb thing. What? What is that? That's sick. Oh, yeah, I made the custom what? orbs for it. No, I ruined it by dying. What? That's so cool. Yeah, I made the custom orbs and the uh, ending screen for Milk Carton. Wow. Oh, the end screen's so cool. Wow. Uh... I don't know how to end this. That was just sick all around. Very talented people in the call with me. I'm just I'm just speaking for everyone. Thank you for having us. Uh, <laughs> thank you for watching. Check out the other point of views. Uh, hopefully this time, Jator will also have the point of view uh, available. And uh, <laughs> like the video, comment, subscribe. Uh, Perfect. Sell your soul. <laughs> and let's go. Nice. Very well said. Thank you.